thank you very much for um, giving me this opportunity today to talk to you about breast health navigation. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about a program that I started at our facility eight years ago. Not all navigation programs are alike, so um, the underlying um, premise, though, is the same. So, when I say navigation, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Maybe a guide, somebody to direct or um, help you steer down a path? Well, as a breast health navigator, um, we act as a guide, a resource, um, an educator, a liaison, or that newly diagnosed breast cancer patient and her family. Um, we are that consistent caregiver through that patient's breast cancer journey. At our facility, uh, the Breast Health Navigator is a nurse who has had special training, further education in um, breast health or the diseases related to the breast. Um, when, um, when, when you think about getting a phone call and on the other end of that line, somebody tells you, you have cancer. Can you imagine how scared and nervous that patient might be? So you don't know if you're going to live or if you're going to die. You have no idea of the treatment that is in store for you. Healthcare today is very complicated, and especially the breast cancer treatment. But with a navigator, it doesn't have to be that complicated. We so the first time this patient who has just received this phone call sits down and meets with the physician, we, the navigator, will be there with this person. Now, this physician, the breast, usually the breast surgeon, um, they have given this talk hundreds and hundreds of times, actually thousands of times, and I as a navigator have heard it thousands of times. But this newly diagnosed breast cancer patient and their family this is the first time they're hearing this conversation. They're scared, they're nervous, they have no idea of the outcome. So they're only going to hear and retain about this much of that conversation. So my role as the navigator, I'm, I'm at this um, first consultation, and my role is to take notes, listen to what the doctor's saying, and start to develop the plan of care. Once the doctor finishes the consult, then I stay in the room with the patient after the physician leaves. I said, do you understand what that doctor just said to you? Do you have any questions? That visit after the doctor leaves may be another half an hour conversation, but at the end, I've answered their questions. They seem to be as calm as, as they can be. Then I'll leave the room for a while. When I leave the room, I'm going to go out and I'm going to schedule any appointments that need to be done, coordinate any testing, and possibly even go ahead and schedule their surgery. Um, when I come back in the room, I have got this plan of care already initiated. I'm going to sit down with this patient who is, and their family, who's scared to death, and I'm going to start to explain to them, this is what we're going to do, this is where you need to be, when you need to be there. So now, over the next week to two weeks, I'm going to be communicating maybe daily with this patient by phone, maybe a couple times during that week, but there's lots of communication going on. The patient has my contact information. I actually have a pager that I keep on Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. I want that patient to feel connected to their healthcare team. So the next time I see this patient, um, in person is probably going to be the morning of her surgery. I go down just to check on her. It's more of a courtesy visit. It's just going down to, for her to see a familiar face, to see if she has any questions. Typically, at this time, the most commonly asked question is, what's next? I, what's next? They're already thinking past the surgery. What do I have to do next? So my response is, well, let's wait and see what the results of surgery and then I'll help coordinate your care. So let's say it's a couple weeks after surgery. Um, she's, the patient's going back to see her um, breast surgeon. They're going to move on to see the medical oncologist. Now, 
The medical oncologist is a physician who specializes in the medicines used to treat cancer, which we typically call chemotherapy. Nobody wants to do chemotherapy. It can last anywhere from three months to a year and beyond. So the process for the navigator starts all over. We sit in on the consult, we take notes, we, when the physician finishes, we make sure that the patient understood what the physician was saying, what the plan is, leave the room, coordinate the care. Now, while the patient is going through their chemotherapy, the navigator is um, visiting them regularly, also checking on them to make sure that um, everything's going smoothly. Once they finish the um, medical oncology portion of their treatment, they're going to move on to radiation therapy. Again, another physician, another specialist. This physician is going to be um, involved in treating the affected area with radiation. The radiation for this portion of this treatment is there to um, maybe kill any cancer cells that this surgery didn't get or maybe the chemotherapy didn't get. By this time in the patient's um, journey, she's probably got about a half a dozen physicians that she's involved with. So again, my role as a navigator, how can I simplify this for this patient? If she has a side effect, a problem, she doesn't know who she calls, when she calls, well, it's never wrong to call the navigator. That's how I make it simple for her. She needs to remember one number, and then hopefully I can um, triage that phone call. Maybe I can even answer the question that she has. So once we get the patient through her chemotherapy, her radiation, radiation can last anywhere from three weeks to um, six and a half weeks. We get the patient through that portion. As a navigator, I don't discharge that patient. I will keep that patient in my file forever, all the way through survivorship. So if the patient has any questions as they go through survivorship, they can call us and, again, we'll triage that phone call. Excuse me, my lips are really dry. <laughs> they, um, so for the navigator, again, like, it doesn't have to be that complicated for us either. We do not need to know the answer to every question, but we do need to know who our resources are so that we can get those questions answered for the patient or their family. As we go through this breast cancer journey with the patient, if we've done anything along the way to ease the burden for this breast cancer patient and their family, or if we've made that journey any easier along the way, then we've been successful at navigating.